between different levels of ethics. And I want to mention this to you. So this isn't necessarily a sharp distinction, um, but the basic idea is something like this. That there's a distinction between so-called meta-ethics and the ethical theory of applied ethics. And as I say, there's not necessarily a sharp line between each of these different levels, but there are maybe characteristic questions that get asked each of these levels. So meta-ethics studies something like the metaphysical status of proper moral properties or moral principles or values. And so meta-ethics asks questions like this, questions like the following. Are there any objective values, or are all values merely subjective? How can a moral principle be justified? What kind of justification is a good one for a moral principle? What's the meaning of linguistic terms like good, or right, or should? So these are the kinds of questions that get asked in meta-ethics. And notice that answering these kinds of questions doesn't directly tell us what's right or wrong, or which moral principles are objective, if any are, or what we should do. So we might agree with one another that there is an objective fact of the matter about what is good, for example, or what we should do. But we might disagree with one another about what we should do or what's good. So we might agree with one another that there is an objective fact of the matter, but disagree with one another about what that fact is. So we might have agreement at the level of meta-ethics, but disagreement at the level of substantive moral or ethical principles. So the level of what I'm calling ethical theory here addresses questions like this. What is it that makes an action, for example, right or wrong? What virtues makes a person a good person? Maybe how is happiness related to morality? So this is the level of substantive principles, substantive accounts of the virtues. And obviously, applied ethics takes the principles or uh, properties from the level of ethical theory and applies them to maybe concrete or more specific topics or cases. So here we get questions at the level of applied ethics. We get questions like this. Is it OK to lie to somebody in order to cheer them up? Or, uh, do we have a moral obligation to sacrifice some of the things that we like in order, but aren't really necessary for us, in order to help people who are in greater need, people who are facing severe poverty? Or is it okay to kill one person in order to save two others, or five others, or a hundred others? Okay, so these are going to be more concrete, what applied, questions um, that we can ask. Okay, there's an interesting question about how exactly political philosophy figures into this picture. One obvious answer to that question is it's just applied ethics. So in order to figure out um, in order to figure out whether um, a certain institutional arrangement is just, for example, or in order to figure out whether we should have um, a democracy or an oligarchy, what we need to do is identify the right principles at the level of ethical theory 
take those principles and apply them to the objects that we're concerned about in political theory. Objects like political institutions, or economic systems, or social arrangements. Okay, so on one picture, political philosophy just is applied ethics. We take the principles from ethical theory and apply them to the objects of concern in political philosophy. And this picture uh, fits in nicely with a sort of broader picture where each level above is, you might say, more foundational for the one below. So the picture is something like this. Uh, first, we need to figure out whether there are any objective moral principles. Uh, once we figure out whether there are such things and what their metaphysical status is, then we can go on to think about which principles those are. We can think about which principles are the ones that are just I mean, you might say there's no point in thinking about and arguing about moral principles if uh, they don't have a metaphysical foundation, and we don't know whether there are any that are objective in the first place. So metaethics is a sort of foundational, uh, takes priority over investigations into ethical theory. And similarly, on this picture, we can't figure out which actions are right or wrong. We can't figure out which institutional arrangements are just or unjust until we figure out what the correct moral principles are. And so I think that's kind of a straightforward picture. But there's another possibility. Um, and one way of thinking about this other possibility is this. Maybe we need different principles for the evaluation of different kinds of objects. Maybe the nature of the object that we're interested in evaluating will affect the, or determine, the principles that it's appropriate to use when evaluating objects of that kind. So when considering whether a person is a good person, we might need certain principles to make the, that evaluation. When we think about whether a law is a good law, maybe we need different principles. When we ask whether, uh, when we ask how a person should treat family members, we need one set of principles. Uh, when we ask how a person should treat animals, maybe we need a different set of moral principles. And maybe we need an entirely different set of principles when we're asking how individuals should treat strangers. So maybe, on this other maybe there's not just one principle at the level of ethical theory that gets applied to different cases. Maybe we need to think about those cases and try to figure out which principles um, are best suited for that. Okay, now if this is right, this other picture is right, we really can't have the kind of top-down approach that I just mentioned a moment ago. We can't identify the perfectly general moral principle that applies to all different kinds of cases and then just apply it to those cases. Rather, we need to well, do something more complicated. We need to work at maybe all three levels at the same time, moving back and forth among them, looking for the relationships uh, that hold among these different levels. Um, so maybe an insight that we have from political philosophy or an insight that we have in some other area of so-called applied ethics will help us understand better what's going on here at the level of ethical theory. And once we figure out principles at the level of ethical theory, maybe that would help us at the level of metaethics understand the possibility of objectivity or the status of values. Okay, so on this other picture, there's a more complicated interdependence among all three of these levels. And maybe we have to move back and forth.
Okay, so the point of all this is that uh, in the readings that we're going to do, we need to pay attention to all three of these levels. Um, we need to pay attention to how Hobbes and Kant and Nietzsche all think about, well, the possibility of objective moral judgments, objective value judgments. We need to help, we need to pay attention to how they think about which principles to endorse and to follow at the ethical level. And then also, especially for Kant and Hobbes, but also somewhat for Nietzsche, we need to think about especially how political principles are related to other principles more broadly in ethical theory. Um, okay. In Hobbes in particular, there's a controversy, there's a debate in the secondary literature about whether uh, Leviathan, the book that we're going to be reading, whether Leviathan should be understood primarily as ethical theory or as political philosophy. There's a controversy about um, the level at which Hobbes is most uh, interested in um, presenting his theory. This shows up in disagreement about how best to interpret his account of the state of nature. So when we get to that, uh, probably next week, um, I will note for you um, how different interpretations of his account of the state of nature tie into this disagreement about whether he's primarily interested in developing more general ethical principles or more uh, limited principles of theory. Okay, any questions about that? All right, then uh, to get started with Hobbes, what I'm going to do today is tell you two historical stories. The first is um, history, history. The first is social and political history, which is especially important in understanding the context in which Hobbes was writing. The second kind of builds on that, but is really philosophical history, history of ethics. Um, this is a philosophy course, not a history course. Uh, and I want to mention one point, important point about why I'm emphasizing the historical context. Sometimes historians or intellectual historians take their project, their investigation, to be a kind of debunking one. They want to show how the social conditions, or the political conditions, or the religious conditions, or the economic conditions in which an author wrote determine the content of the view in question. How maybe the social context works behind the back of the author to influence his viewpoint of things and determine what he says. Um, this is not going to be the approach that we'll take here. It's not the approach that I'm taking. Um, we're assuming that all of